Hey guys, welcome to Rudra Tech Tutorial and this is the first video in the series of video that I am going to make about the Angular interview questions. The purpose of creating this video is to give a common answer given by all including me at time when we are freshers and try to build a comprehensive answer by explaining the concept. The format of this video will be of a quiz and a question. We will be starting with a quiz and the more focus will be given to the question. In this video, we are going to try and explain one way versus two way binding and try to build a answer around it. Now, this is one of the most commonly asked interview questions. And in fact, it is mostly the first question that is being asked since Angular JS, that is the first version of Angular. Now, before we move ahead with our question, I'm going to ask you a quiz. Now, in this quiz, I have a simple component and in this component we have at the rate component and its class. Now in this component class I have created two constructors. Constructor 1 and this is the constructor 2. Do tell me will this component with two constructor get compiled and executed on the browser. If you are an expert you will already know the answer. If you don't know please wait till the end of the video and I will give you the explanation for this. Now. Coming to our question, what is difference between one way and two way binding? Now the most common answer given for this question is one way binding that is a way of data flows in a single direction from component or model to the view and it is achieved using interpolation that is the string interpolation and property binding. Then the two way binding is the way of the data flows from component or model to the view and from view to the model or component and it is achieved using the ng model keyword or the directive. Now, this answer is good but is this the perfect answer? No. Now let's go and see what is one way and two way binding in brief. Now one way binding is a way of sending the data from component to view in a single direction and from view to component in single direction. Now let's go and see the different methods using which we can achieve the one way binding. First is string interpolation or commonly called as interpolation. In this case, the data flows from component to view and the string interpolation can be achieved using the double curly braces in your template and placing the property or the expression that you want to evaluate in between the opening and closing of double curly braces. Then is the property binding. Now there are a lot of properties that are associated with the HTML tags. Like in this case the image tag is having the SRC property. Now if I want to apply or attach a behavior to this particular property I can use the square brackets around it to mark it as ready for property binding and place a variable for it. Then we can also perform the property binding on angular components or directives using this particular syntax. And this is achieved using the at the rate input decorator within the component class. Then there is attribute binding. Now attribute binding similar to the property binding sends the data from component to the view. Now when we say attribute in SRC is also an attribute but in the DOM it is marked as a property of the image tag but there are certain attributes of HTML tags that are not classified as the properties of the tags in the DOM. Now those properties can be bound using the property binding using a syntax like this. Now the call span is the attribute that is not bound as a property to the td element and hence we have to use a slightly different syntax for attribute binding like this in this case attribute dot call span and whatever the variable or the value that you want to set for this call span then there is class binding now using the class binding you can add or remove the classes on the basis of condition to particular html element now in this case i have a div element for which I want to attach certain classes and that can be done using this particular class and 
here I can place a binding class which on the basis of condition I can add or remove. Now there is another example that I have given that class dot example class. Now I want to apply this particular class if and only if the particular conditions or whatever it may be is valid. Now in this case if this condition is true this class will be applied to the div element and if it is not true this class will not be applied to the given div element then there is style binding similar to the class binding we can apply the styles on the basis of the conditions now in this example i have tried to apply the style dot color that is the color property of the style attribute and if it is valid i want to set the color to be red that is the text color to be red if it is not valid then i want to set the value to blue now up to this point whatever the binding types that we have seen are all flowing from component to view or the class of our component to the template of our component but there is one more type that can help us to bind the data from the view to the component and that is event binding now the events capture a lot of things that can be mouse clicks left click right click button clicks mouse movement or any other actual interaction done by the user like double click single click like that now in this case whatever the data or the information that flows is from the view so whatever the action is happening is on the view and that data from the view is transferred to the component hence event binding is also a kind of a one way binding because in this case the data flows in a single direction from view to the components class now that event binding can be achieved using the parenthesis and whatever the event that you want within these parenthesis and then it is bound to a particular method within components class where the data will be transferred to then there is two way binding well two way binding is achieved using ng model and the two way binding is way of sending the data from view that is from the template to the components class or from components class to the html template now that is achieved using this particular ng model syntax and giving it a property name that is declared within the components class now this particular syntax is commonly used in all of the applications but there is one more syntax that we can use for two way binding now in this case so ng model is attached as a property binding to the variable and the ng model change is attached as a event binding to a particular method to capture that data and transfer it to the components class now if you notice the syntax of the two way binding with ng model you will notice that there is a square brackets which represents the property binding and then there is a parenthesis which represents the event binding now there is a combination of these two using which the two way binding works so this is how we have one way and two way binding now let's get a comprehensive answer now here is the second answer that is more comprehensive than the first answer that we have seen previously in the video now when we get a question like one way versus two way binding we can answer it like the one way binding is a way of sending the data or the data flow in a single direction from component or model to the view and that can be achieved using interpolation property binding attribute binding class binding and style binding also the data flow from view to component using event binding then the two way binding is a way of flow of data between component and view and from view to component and it is achieved using the ng model directive now if you want to include the ng model directive you must include the forms module in the app module as well now i hope this answer will help you more in your interviews now let's go and answer the quiz that i have asked at the beginning of the video now answer to the question that will this class or the component compile 
if we have multiple constructors within the components class? The answer is no. Why? Because TypeScript does not allow multiple constructors. There are ways or workarounds using which we can implement overloaded constructors. But it has to be a single one. We cannot have multiple implementations of the constructor within a Angular's component or a TypeScript's class. I hope you have liked this video and I will be making more and more videos like this. Do subscribe and thank you.